this is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs and today's video I'm going to show you how to make this little harness that Maximo is wearing and this pattern is a free brand new release on my blog and it comes in four sizes and it's completely adjustable it um, comes in size extra extra small all the way to size medium which is for dogs two pounds to 15 pounds now we don't use any buttons or uh, snaps because those can be choking hazards because we know that dogs chew. And we don't use Velcro because the Velcro can get caught in their underbelly skin. Here you go, Max. Stand up for me. That's a good boy. Now the way the harness works is you slip it on over their head and then you attach it under their belly using D-rings. And this pattern is perfect for boy or girl dogs. Now, even though the pattern has set sizes, it's a good idea to measure your dog, and that's why I've got Maximo here. Just take your tape measure and measure around the neck, and you can see this is a little bit looser because we don't want it to be too tight, and then also measure around the belly with your tape measure, and it's also a good idea to measure the length because a two pound dog isn't gonna be the same length as a 15 pound dog, and so you can adjust that and we'll talk about that when we do the video. So, this is our Max's Harness crochet pattern, free on the blog. There's Rosie peeking around the corner. She's wearing one too. So you can see it's perfect for boys or girls. All right, let's gather our supplies. I'm gonna be using this worsted weight four red for the body of my harness and it has lots of pretty flex in it. This is an I Love This yarn. I got this on clearance at Hobby Lobby. I thought it would be perfect for the harness. And then I'm going to use this blue for my trim. This is with Love from Red Heart. You can use any worsted weight yarns that you want. I don't really suggest cotton. You can use cotton. That's nice to use that for the summertime when the weather gets a little warmer but it doesn't have much stretch, and so you'll have to take that into consideration if you use cotton. We're going to be using our H hook today, and I've got my favorite purple H hook. You're going to need two one inch D rings, and that's how we're going to attach it underneath the belly, and that's how it also makes it a little bit adjustable. You're also going to need a needle with a nice big eye in it, because we'll have to sew those D rings on, and of course, weave in our ends. And then, of course, you're going to need your scissors. For today's demonstration, I'm going to be making the smallest size, the extra, extra small, just so that you can see how the um, Max's dog harness works. And it's made all in one piece. We're going to be working from the belly band up to the neck band. So take a minute, gather your supplies, and let's get started. Now we're going to begin working our belly band from the bottom and working our way up to the neck band. And this is what it looks like folded out. It's long flat edge, D-rings on one side, the tab on the other. We're going to begin down here and working our way up. To make the smallest size, I needed to chain 43 chains. So I already did that. Put your slip knot on your hook and then chain 43 chains or the amount of chains called for for your size. Then we're going to turn and then we're going to begin working half double crochets in the second chain from the hook. So here's our first chain, here's our second chain. In a half double crochet, you wrap the yarn over your hook, you go in the chain or the stitch that you're working and pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Then you'll yarn over and go take that loop and pull it through all three of those loops that were on your hook. That's a half double crochet. I love the half double crochet and if you've watched my videos in the past you know that this is one of my favorite basic stitches because sometimes a double crochet is too tall and a single crochet is too short and so a half double crochet makes an in-between size stitch and it makes a little bit more compact size stitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to place one half double crochet in each chain across our row. And the belly band portion of the 
Max's dog harness or adjustable dog harness um, is worked with half double crochets because it makes a nice compact belly band. And one of the things that I have found with putting this style of dog harness on my dogs is when they're afraid, uh, storms, firecrackers, things like that, you can put this on them and make sure that it fits snugly around that band. And that's why it's a good idea to make it adjustable. And they feel a little bit more comforted with that band around them. I don't know why. I don't know what that has to do with anything, but they do. So we're going to be stitching one half double crochet in each chain across. So now I've stitched one half double crochet in each chain across. I'm going to chain one and turn. And the chain one does not count as a stitch, it is merely a turning chain. And a turning chain is just a single crochet or a single chain that we make in order to make the rows lay nicely when we turn. And then we're going to place one half double crochet in each stitch across. Now this is where I wanted to talk to you a little bit about adjusting your pattern. Now those measurements that you took of the dog that you're making this harness for are very important. Because if your dog you measured and it doesn't fit, you're going to need to adjust. And you'll adjust it by three chains equal one inch. And that's how you'll adjust it around. For inch per inch, you'll add or subtract three chains. The other thing is the width of the band this way. Now, the pattern calls to make four rows and then you'll make the row with the tab, and then you'll make more rows. Now, if you want your band to be more narrow or even more wider, say for a 15-pound dog, you can make as many rows that you want. The main thing is that when you go to put your tab on, that you center that tab um, so that when you go to attach your D-rings and your tab, they will meet up and also be centered on the belly band. So it's kind of up to you as far as the around because you want it to fit the dog and also the width of how much um, width you want for your belly band. And um, that's why those measurements are so very important. Um, you're, you'll, uh, you'll know that maybe a five pound miniature bulldog is not shaped the same as a five pound chihuahua. And so your every dog is different. Even two chihuahuas can be shaped different. And so it's a good idea to measure that dog and to go according to your measurements as well as use the sizes that are given. Now the sizes have been tested, but not on every single breed of dog. And, and so that's why I call this adjustable because it's such a simple pattern that you can adjust it to fit your dog. All right, back to the pattern. We're going to make three more rows of half double crochets for the belly band, and then I'm going to show you how to put on the tab that we use for our D-rings. So one half double crochet in each stitch for four rows. So I've done four rows of half double crochet. Now I'm making the extra, extra small size, so I'm not going to do the fifth row. But I am going to show you how to make the band, or not the band, the tab, that you're going to need when we go to attach our D-rings and the tab that the D-rings hook on. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to chain nine chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. And then you'll need to have double crochet in the second chain from the hook, and then you'll have double crochet all the way across the, ta the tab and then the belly band. So we'll have double crochet. There's a first chain, and we're going to go in the second chain 
This will give us eight half double crochets. Now, on the larger sizes, I have you making the tab longer. That is totally up to you how long you want your tab. The longer the tab, the more able you are to adjust it under the belly, which is kind of nice because my dogs gain weight in the winter and lose weight in the summer because we're walking more. All right, so there's my tab. And now I'm going to go right back to half double crocheting in each half double crochet across my belly band. One half double crochet in each half double crochet across. And then we'll half uh, chain one, and then we'll half double crochet back to the tab. So we chained nine, we turned, and we stitched one half double crochet starting in the second chain for eight half double crochets, and then we have double crocheted all the way back across our belly band. Now we're going to chain one. And then we're going to half double crochet all the way across our belly band and all the way to the end of our tab. So one half double crochet in each stitch all the way across to the tip of our tab. We have stitched one half double crochet in each stitch across all the way to the end of the tab. Now we're going to chain one, which we did, and we're going to slip stitch in those first eight stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that's our tab that we're going to use with our D-rings. Then we're going to go back to doing half double crochets. And we'll do one half double crochet in each stitch across. And then we'll do another row of half double crochets back to here. So basically we're doing two rows of half double crochets. Well, we have finished with the belly band portion. If you would like your belly band to be thicker, you can definitely add more rows across for a much thicker belly band. Now I'm going to show you how to do the back portion, and that's the center section here that goes up the back of the harness. And what you're going to do, depending on what size, will depend on how many slip stitches that you do. For the extra small size, we're going to do 16, I'm sorry, I'm doing the extra, extra small size. So I'm going to do 14 slip stitches. So one, two, and just in case you don't know what a slip stitch is, you put your hook through, pull a loop up, and then that loop, you pull it right through that loop that's on your hook, just like that. And we're doing 14. All right, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now, we're going, we slip stitched in these first 14 half double crochets. And we want to make sure we leave the same amount over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just mark that just in case I got my stitches off. Because we want the same amount of open 
there as we have here because we're going to stitch the back portion of our belly band up this way. But if you stitched it correctly, for the extra, extra small size, you'll have 14, 14, and 14. And that's the same on all the sizes. The amount that you slip stitch here is the same amount you'll have for your, up your back as the amount that's left unstitched here. So we're going to be switching to double crochet. So we're going to chain three. That counts as your first double crochet. And then we're going to place one double crochet in the next 14 stitches. And I accidentally skipped a stitch there. Just in case you don't know what a double crochet is, we're going to yarn over, go through that stitch, pull a loop up. You'll have four, three loops on your hook, then you'll yarn over and go through the first two, yarn over and go through the second two, and that's a double crochet. And now we're going to double crochet for 14 stitches because we're forming, like I said, the back section of your dog harness. <laughs> I marked it with a needle and it's coming out when I rub my hand across it. All righty. One more stitch. Okay. Chain three, one, two, three. So now you can see we're going up the back of our harness to make the back section. And these are the parts that will go to the back at our D-ring and then there's our tab. Just so you can get an idea of how it's supposed to look. So what we're going to do for rows, this was row 10 on our pattern. Of course, I didn't do as many rows here, so there aren't as many rows. But this one here, the beginning of our back section is row 10. And for the extra small, extra, extra small size, I need to have um, up through, um, let's see, row, looks like row 13. Let me read that right. Yes. Row 13, so I need to do more rows. And this is another place where you needed to make sure you measured your dog so that you have enough rows to reach from the belly band to the neck. And so you're just going to be stitching your chain three. It counts as your first double crochet. And then you're going to be stitching as many rows needed for your dog's measurement. For the extra, extra small, I need to do three more rows. So I'm going to turn this. And we're going to double crochet in the next stitch and in each stitch across. One double crochet in each double crochet. There we go. <clears throat> Last stitch is in the top of that chain three, and then chain three, and turn. And now you can see our back section is forming. So, for extra, extra small, I need to do two more rows. <clears throat> and then extra small, small and medium, you'll do more rows according to the pattern. So let's go ahead and get those rows done, and then I'll show you how to add your neckband. So I've stitched the back of my harness, and I'm ready to add my neckband. Now, if you made your harness bigger, of course, you'll have more rows here. And now it's time to make the neckband. And for each size, you'll chain a different amount. For the extra, extra small, we chained 13. You'll chain more for the bigger sizes, of course. And so what we're going to do is we're going to join this chain that we made to the other side of the harness 
and we're just going to do a slip stitch and chain one. And now we're going to place one single crochet in each one of those chains that we just made. Stitching one single crochet in each chain. Move that so we can see better. There we go. See our neck band forming already. All righty. And then we're going to place one single crochet in each of the double crochets around. Just moving around the top of the neck. Make sure we don't twist our chain for our neck band so that when we attach it, it lays nice. All right. Let me get all the way back around here. There we go. I'm going to straighten out my chain. All right. We've Single crochet our chain, and then we single crochet around the top of the neck band, and now we're going to join to that first chain one with a slip stitch and chain one. And then we're going to stitch two rows of single crochet around the top of the band. And this just gives us a nice size band. And again, if you want your neck band to be thicker, you can make as many rows of single crochet as you want. I like it just thick enough to stay put, but not too thick to make it uncomfortable. Now, your dog, if, he's, if he has a longer neck, say a miniature greyhound or something like that that has a little bit longer neck, you can actually add as, you know, as many rows of single crochet as you would like. So, we're going to add three rows, actually two more rows, for a total of three rows of single crochet, and then we're going to tie off. So I finished my three rows of single crochet, and we joined, and we cut our yarn, and now we're going to do the trim, and so we're going to just bring in another color, Pull that loop up and snug that down. And then we're going to just stitch a row of single crochet like we did, but just in this pretty blue color for a nice trim. And we'll just go all the way around the neck, for a nice row of single crochets, and then we'll join and tie off. So I stitched the trim around the neck, and now I'm going to add some trim, and I'm going to start here on this corner, and I'm going to go down, then I'm going to stitch around the bottom, go back up, and go around the tab, and end here. Now you can go all the way around and do the whole trim if you want to, I just didn't think that it was necessary, but of course, it's up to you. So I'm going to join my yarn at this corner. And then I'm going to evenly stitch single crochets down the side. And this will just give the edge a nice finished look and also give us a little something more substancy <laughs> to stitch our D-rings on. One thing to remember when you're stitching down the side of an item that isn't a row, make sure that you go in as many stitches as possible and not the holes. And um, it's really kind of just filling your way through, filling, making sure there aren't any big gaps between your stitches. 
And then when you get to that first corner, you're going to need to put three single crochets in the corner, and that'll help it move around better so that it's a nice corner. And of course, the bottom, we have the edges of the, tr of the chain to stitch in, so we can stitch across the bottom using those chains. And it's a, it gives it not just a really nice edge for your harness. Let's go ahead and stitch across the bottom, and then I'll show you how to, how to deal with all these ins and out corners. So I stitched across this bottom using the chain to make nice even stitches, and then I did my three single crochets in this corner. And then we're just going to single crochet evenly up the side. until we reach this corner. Oh, my, my yarn split a little there. There we go. And then we just go right in those stitches on the side. And we're not going to put three single crochets in the corner on this because it'll make our tab too wide. So we're just going to ease around the corner. There we go. Just sort of ease around it. And then we'll place one single crochet in each one of those stitches. I am plagued with yarn that has yarn barfs and knots. <laughs> and then we just go right back down the rest of the belly band. There we go. Then we'll tie that off. Now, if you want to go ahead and trim this edge, trim up here, go all the way around and trim all the way back, you can. I just didn't do it. I didn't think it was necessary for what I wanted, but it's up to you. You certainly can. So we're going to tie that off. And again, I'm just going to pull that to the back so it's out of the way, and then I'll weave that in a little later. Okay, so the last thing that we need to add is our D-rings. And the way we do that is we grabbed our two D-rings, make sure they're facing the same direction, and then you want to center them even with your tab. And I've got red yarn on here, but since I've got a blue trim, I think I'm going to just grab a piece of blue yarn. There we go. Maybe it'll blend in a little better. All right, so we're just going to line those D-rings up. And it's a little bit awkward, maybe, but if you hold it with your thumb, just go from the back, go through both D-rings. And I just hold that thread, and as I'm going through, I just stitch over it. And I just do five or six stitches to hold it in place. And a lot of times I'll just go right back across. Because you want your D-ring to stay. This is something you're going to be using a lot. So you want it to be sturdy and stay in place. There we go. And then I just go like this. Go through those stitches. And then I'll tie it right on with that tail because I want this to stay put. I don't want it to come off in the middle of a walk. So I give it a couple of good knots and give it a clip. And there's your D-rings.
Oops, make sure one's on top of the other or they don't work. <laughs> All right, so now we've got our tab and our D-ring. And the way you do that is you slip the whole tab through both D-rings. And this is what makes it adjustable because you have all this space to work with. And then this, it may, this is a little bit of a snug, but you know, you just take the end and stick it. Let me get my arm out of the way. There we go. Right through there. And it makes a nice snug fit for your dog. Now I did add a bow and it's a really, really simple bow. So to make an, a bow, make your slip knot and chain 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Got a string in there. 11. Now we're going to go in the second chain from the hook and make a single crochet. And then we'll single crochet and each stitch across for 10 single crochets. So you see the bow isn't very big. It's just a fun little bow. And this is a perfect little bow to go on just about anything that you want a small bow for. Hats, mittens, scarves. Just a fun little bow. All right, so then we're going to turn, and we're going to chain one and turn and stitch one single crochet and each single crochet across. And then we'll do this for a total of four rows of single crochet. So I stitched four rows of single crochet and I'm going to clip off that yarn. And now I'm going to make it into a bow. And of course we're going to need to weave in those ends and we'll do that after a bit. But all you do is you just take another piece of yarn and you pinch up that center and you just wrap that yarn around. There we go. And then bring it to the back and tighten a knot. There we go. And now you have a nice little bow. You can put it up here, all these strings. We need to get those tidied up. You can put it up here. You can put it down here. You can put it at the neck, wherever that you want. It's just a nice little bow to add to your harness. I think it adds just the perfect touch. It's all woven in and tidied up, and I sewed on my bow. I decided to put it at the bottom and not at the top or at the neck. Gives it a little bit of a feminine touch, I think. And I slipped it on my, my stuffed kitty cat so you could see the way it looks. Here's the belly with the, with the hook, neck band, stomach's open because it's a, it's a harness, and then the way it looks on the back. Now, I did have one question about how to, if your dog wears a regular harness, how does it work? And that's one of the reasons I chose to use the double crochet down the back center is because you can get it through the sweater between the holes of the double crochet. So that's our Max's adjustable harness. Works great for dogs 2 to 15 pounds.